Okay guys, so I've started a little bit earlier, so we're due to start at 7 o'clock with uh, Sam King talking about his, obviously, the beginner's carping, um, which is basically what we're, we're planning to do tonight. Uh, it's just going to be a short, general chat. Evening, Ben, how are you doing? Hope you're keeping well. Benny Boy Simpkins, hello. Um, so basically, the plan is this evening is to do a, a, a short chat. And it's just an introduction to carp angling. Like I said, you can angle, and we cover many, many, many different species. I'm an all-around angler myself. I have lots of sort of pike, carp, perch, tench. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm all around. Uh, Sam's mainly what I'd say is a carp angler. So he's going to give up some of our time later on this evening uh, at 7 o'clock just to talk about the basics of carp fishing. So it may be interesting to some. It may not be interesting to others. But it's a point of... An introduction that's what it is what it would do give you an idea of, of what um, carp fishing is about what us crazy carp anglers do what you know, when we go fishing the things that keep us comfortable some of the basic basic rigs and tactics that will help you catch and it's just to give you sort of like i said an introduction so that'll be coming up in the next sort of five minutes or so uh beforehand i just want to say again a massive thank you to everyone who's been supporting the brand i don't know if you've realized that slowly 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 we've been producing our hooks i mean they were going to come out about two weeks ago but i weren't happy with one of them so uh, i think it was the curve of uh, the crank so the crank had a funny little sort of mark on the eye i weren't very happy with so i sort of just ditched out and started again so it's one of them things that people that know me are can be quite funny over what i'm selling it's hard hard work and it's the same with the team it's hard to choose team it's so hard to choose team members because you don't want to be too pushy but you want sort of like you need the help um in regards to sort of all the tackle i'm bringing out it's hard because Sometimes things take a bit longer than you expect to bring them to market, but you have to check them. There's no good just ordering something from wherever and get out and go, oh, yeah, that'll do, that'll be fine, put it in a packet and send it off. We need to make a um, big effort to check these things, bend them, pull them, check that it's all lined up nicely, none of ski with. And not only that, as people don't realise, when I do the UK angling range, especially with the hooks, Chris will, will vouch for this, I'm seriously, seriously funny. So what I actually do is every single hook that goes in that packet, and it takes me forever, I actually pick up and look at. I don't just start pouring them into packets off loads of people. I don't get nothing pre-packaged. I like to um, check them out myself. So every single hook that goes in that packet, you could be 150% assured that I personally myself, I've checked it, made sure it looked right, and I put it in the packet. I, wouldn't, I won't put anything in there I wouldn't use myself. Um, no, I won't be selling, yeah, that sort of kind of thing, Matt. I'm really, really fun. That's why things take, take a tiny little bit longer to come out. I'll have a plan. It will, it will come to me. See, people, when I order something or check something, I'll find a manufacturer. I don't just go, like I said, that's what I want. I'm getting it. I'll go through loads and loads of different people. I waste so much money just throwing thing, things away. I mean, I had some clips a while back I thought were great. After about a couple of weeks to use them. I noticed there was a bit of uh, it was a bit soft on one of the, on the actual clipper the leg went on and then her consultant went out with them and I said Chris really smashed these about and we noticed it was very only on, on every half a dozen or so it was, it was weak so it was starting to snap. I think Ben was out with Chris one day and he play clocked it so they picked up, threw them in a bin, had a bit of an email, a bit of a moan about them and uh, they'll never come to market again so we've got a different set now that have come out. So I'm just gonna wait for uh so we're a little bit early but I say um Sam's going to give us a lowdown. I'm aware this is a all around angling Rich Wilby Cup, but he's been good enough to come on in a couple of shows to have a chat with us, and I thought I'd buy a cup just to say thank you. It's a good cup, to be fair. <laughs> I want to get grilled by the lads for this, but it's tough. I'll have a little thing. I'll be honest, slightly, slightly, tiny, tiny, teeny, weeny, weeny disappointed a bit about is that I put a call out to all the other guys on the social media world. All the other um, bait producers, all the other tackle companies, and it was a bit cheeky. Uh, and I, <laughs> there looks the oats give to you know. Yeah, basically they're up there on hooks. Yeah, I've been sort of like, well, I've got sourced them in. Um, I've, it's a really, it's a little guy that makes them for me. Yeah, it seems absolutely sound. I've, I've been really, really anal off this. But anyway, to get to the company I've got to, it wasn't a case of just banging online and banging the company name in. You, these, this is exactly how what you've had to do. It has to be a registered company, a limited company, not a, reg a registered company house limited company, which gives you a reference number. On that reference number, you then have to be 
uh, proven that you can become VAT registered, which then gives you another bloody code. Once you've got them two codes, you can apply for another code, which then allows you to sort of import, export, and you can actually get into different places where other people can't get to because you need these three numbers. Um, some people, yeah, I know, all around the cup, Chris. I know some people probably think I'm waffling crap and it's not a fact, but I can assure you 100% that's the reason why over time you've seen the limited company thing come up, the back come up, all the other bits and pieces come up. because I, And that's why it stalled a little bit, because I didn't realise I needed one bit of paperwork I had to apply for as well. So it's not been a an overnight thing. I've been building this for, for months and months and months. So, two seconds. So I've been, uh, so I've been working for some months. So it's not a case of I've just sort of done about a thought. So everything I check personally, make sure they're right, and make sure they're correct before I even attempt to give them out to anyone. So be assured that, yeah, I'm pretty funny about that. So, as always, I'm just chucked outside into my little mini conservatory because the kids are taking up the house. Um, the internet, oh, I've gone on some 4 gigs. It seems to be a lot smoother than the uh, Wi-Fi in-house, I suppose, because I've got about seven kids on it. Well, I'm not seven kids, but two kids on it, Fortnite, this, that, and the other. So I've obviously come out and, and done up the 4G. So I think some of the topics we're going to be covering with Sam are going to be uh, just basically basic equipment. Uh, also things like type of venues that be good for beginners angling. Thanks, Chris. I know they're good hooks. Uh, people probably say you're biased, but obviously I, I, I've thrown so many away where I've sourced them and not been happy with them. It's, it's, it's uh, no, so let's try and get Sam. Hello, Con, how are you doing, buddy? I don't believe you see how, how the pit's coming along. I put a picture up or a little video up of cot from the other year that was cutting around. A, a little fat belly common. Absolutely loved it. I'm, I'm determined to catch one this year. 100% I'm going to catch one. There's no it's no buts. I've been baiting it with my bait. I've been doing my spots. I'm out things. There he is. Hello, Sam. How are you doing, yeah. buddy? How are you doing? All right. Good, man. My, I'm hoping the signal holds, pal, because I've been re retired to the, shoved into the conservatory. Because the kids are sort of like took up the house, you know what it's like. They're all on their fortnight. They're all on their. Uh, I've, I've sent mine out for the evening. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no they're, they're all upstairs out the way. No, I'm in a cold, cold conservatory. I'm not brand advertising at all, Sam. I'm just sitting here <laughs> keeping warm. It just so happens to be that my coats and my hats keep me warm. <laughs> nah, it's all good, mate. All good. So first, first, Sam, I'm really, really appreciate you taking your evening out to do a little chat about for beginners carping for people because, you know, we, we assume everybody knows what carp fishing is. We assume everybody knows about the ins and outs of, of carp angling, um, but, but not everyone does. I mean, people forget this, this course anglers, match anglers. So in regards to the carp fishing, um, what would you say, what makes carp angling carp angling, Sam? What would you say in regards to what makes it what it is? Well, I don't know, really. I mean... It sort of follows suit with all other sorts of fishing, really. But it's just, just something about carp fishing, especially in the winter. You get a nice mirror, a winter mirror in its dark colours, or uh, a spring common with its nice golden colours down its flanks. Oh, you, you just can't go wrong with it. <laughs> so, would you? Was it, was it that draws you to carp? Then, it's the colours, or just purely the size, or the power of the run? Sorry, mate, I have to say that again. You broke up a little bit. Sorry, mate. Would well, you say that carp fishing, what is it that uh, is it for you? Is it the scale patterns that does it, the coloration, or the power of, of like the way it runs? Just to just, yeah, I suppose uh, I mean, uh, commons are my favourite. So you always get a hell of a fight when it comes to a common carp, whether it be £10, £20, £40. You're going to get a fight with a common. And that's always just kept me intrigued with them, really. Yeah, they're nice when they look that chestnut colour, aren't they? You know, when they go no, like that, yeah, a mahogany chestnut. So, as as we go forward, then Sam, what would you say is the basis for a carp setup? For a bit, if, if if I was a total novice and I went to you, Sam, what do I need to get involved in carp angling? What would be my basic setup? Well, first and foremost, before you go into any gear, rod licence. Make sure you get your rod license. Not only is it important because it helps towards uh, the environment agency, but it also costs you an arm and a leg if you get caught without one. <laughs> yeah. It's highly illegal to fish without one in most lakes these days. I know you can get a few free lakes here and there, but most lakes require you to have a rod license. So first and foremost, get yourself a rod license, whether it be for a day, three days, or a year. Two rods, three rods, 
just get your license first and foremost secondly uh cart care is really the first thing you should look at so unhooking mats a retainer which i find handy to move the fish around uh, a minimum of a 42 inch net because you're covered with a 42 inch net whether it's like i said again whether it's a 10 pounder or a 40 pounder any sort of cart that sort of size is going to fit into a 42 inch net yeah uh, also uh come a common thing is that people actually do quite often get the wrong size net for carp fishing. Yes, they? definitely. Yeah, the amount of times I've gone down to a lake and since like people with tiny little twenty-inch nets fishing a lake with thirties in it. Now you are not going to get a thirty in a twenty-inch net. Deep pat a deep net because when you unclip the from the the block, as it were, you can you get that roll, don't you, to help support the carp as well. You can roll it up in a net instead of just carrying yeah, exactly it around. Right. Also, like, um, also, almost acts as if it's a retainer in itself. Mm. But with that, also, once you've unclipped the net, you can slide your retainer underneath it, and then that takes the strain of it. And there's no chance. And also, when you do pick up the cup, make sure its fins are down. Don't go mm. picking it up willy nilly. Have a little check, just tilt it to one side, tilt it to the other side, make sure that its fins are flat against its body. Last thing you want to go and do is cause it any more harm than what you already have putting a hook in its mouth. Awesome. Yep. Uh, touching on uh, also other things for safety, forceps. Sometimes it can be quite fiddly as a beginner to get a, a hook out of the carp's mouth. And the last thing you want to go and do is it flick its body around and you get stung with a hook in your hand. So a pair of forceps. They don't, they don't, they don't cost the earth and they're handy to have. Uh, and then lastly on, on uh, carp care, some propolis. Because accidents happen, they catch themselves on the line, a scale of fallout or the, the hooks pulled slightly at their mouth or something like that. Little bit of the propolis on there, rub it over with a little bit of water so it sets in and it's set, the, the fish is fine. Well, I and mean, that's yeah, like, a, a, uh, like a plaster for a carp, isn't it? For, for a damaged carp? Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, basically. Awesome. Uh, so but basically, that, that's it really on uh, the safety side of things. Uh, next sort of thing is the form of carp fishing. So primarily I've narrowed it down to three different forms. So you're going to bottom fishing, zig fishing, or floater fishing, which is surface fishing. Now, obviously, with today's being a beginner's side of things, I'm just primarily going to look at bottom fishing. So I can see in intermediate is more of a, a zigs and floater sort of style. So we'll just mm. stick with bottom fishing today. So with bottom fishing, the basic sort of kit you're going to need is some sort of alarms, uh, buzz bars, a pod, or some single bank sticks swingers and bobbins which give you a sort of indication during the day of and also of uh like a backdrop mm -hmm. which i'll get into detail what backdrop is it uh, in shortly uh then your rods uh what size rods you want and what test curve now being a beginner you don't want to go ridiculously strong rods and you don't want to go for like a four pound test curve rod where you're banging it out 200 yards there's yeah. no need for that as a beginner yes it's going to cost a little bit more in the long run once you upgrade and stuff like that, but that's the beauty of fishing. You can upgrade gradually. So if you look at, say, it's just getting yourself a 12 foot rod with just like a, I don't know, a two and a half pound test curve strength on it, that's a good all rounder. I mean, I've, I've had carp up to near 40 pound on a two and a half pound test curve rod and it's played it wonderfully. So you can't really go wrong with that side of things. Uh, then there's reels. Now, in the carp fishing world, it's becoming quite popular at the moment to have non-bait runner reels where you control everything on the drag. So when you strike, you put your hand over the, the spool and then you strike into it and then you tighten the clutch and then you wind into it and you play it on the clutch, undoing it, tightening it as you go. But then there's bait runners. Now I'm a massive believer in bait runners. I've always used them uh, and they, they do exactly what they say on the tin. Yeah, I mean for a beginner, you just literally you're clicking it and clicking it on the back, aren't you, for a bait runner? Yeah, of, uh... exactly that. More, more reason for beginners to jump in on the bait runner one because all it is you do you cast out you set your rod you put it in the alarm put your hanger on and like you say you just click on the back of the reel or, or on some of the on some of the reels just on the front as well just click the bait runner on and away you go uh next one uh line line quite important as well now in the beginner scene i'd say a 15 pound line is a good all-rounder uh, it's going to sink well when you cast out it's strong enough to pull you away from snaggy areas and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's not so heavy 
that you can't cast far of it. I've found that through my experiences, a heavier line is harder to cast. So a 15 pound line is perfect all rounder really. And then set scales. Mm. We all need scales. The amount of times I've, I've seen on other pages, oh, yeah. I've caught this fish and it's a lovely <laughs> fish, but I haven't got to wait for it because I didn't say have scales. Yeah, and, a, and, a, and a, without a, scales. A Thirty pound very quickly, didn't they, with no scales? Isn't it? Exactly Pretend that. It's like yeah. that. So to save any arguments, just pop a bag, uh, set of scales in your bag. They don't have to be marvellous. They, they, they all work pretty much the same. Now, obviously, when you're carp fishing, it's handy to have a half decent set of scales, say mm -hmm. up to, I don't know, 50, 60 pounds, because that's the sort of fish that we can get in this country. But definitely, scales and a weigh sling. You can weigh the fish in the retainer. Some of them have like a little metal ring on the handles there, but some of them don't. So if in doubt, just get yourself a weigh sling, keep it in your rucksack, jobs are good. Oh, awesome. uh, then uh, well, rigs. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail because I know we've got one of our other members, Jason, in a couple of weeks' time doing a talk on, on rigs. So I'm not going to go into too much detail. But in the beginner side of things, I'd say a pre-tied rig would be handy to go for because you're still learning. Now, myself, I've only got into tying my own rigs in the last, what, two or three years? I've yeah. just been buying pre-tied ones before that. And they've worked wonderful for me. There's a, a massive selection you can get. You can get massively branded ones. You can pick some off of eBay and stuff like that. But just to save, because when you're first starting, you're taking in a lot of information at the same time. Exactly. So to save getting bombarded, just get yourself yeah. some pre tied ones. And you, don't, and you don't want to time wrong, do you? So, you know, if you, you no, exactly pre, I mean, I'd say a, a, half decent, a decent pre tied rig, you're comfortable knowing that it's going to be tied correctly, the swivels are going to be in the correct places. If you, you know, if, if you do hook, you, 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 when you hook onto a carp, it's not going to straighten, it's not going to snap, it's not going to get sort of left out there as a, as a dead rig or anything like that. So, exactly that, yeah, exactly yeah, that. 100%. And then with, with the, the pre tied rigs as well, yeah, look at leads. Now, depending on the, the venue you're fishing, I mean, I, I fish with a three ounce lead myself when I'm fishing a distance, but when I'm fishing short distance, just a two ounce lead would do just fine. It's just enough to give it that little bit of resistance on the hook, and the fish takes it bang, it hooks in their bottom lip perfect, and they're away. Uh, also tubing, now you can get lead core tubing, you can get normal tubing. I'm a massive believer in a lead core tubing because it helps the rig set down when it's going down to the bottom and everything laid nice and flat on you the bottom the, of the lake. Like the tungsten tubing you can get now, can't you? Yeah, the tungsten tubing, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then there's clips, like you were saying earlier at the beginning of the stream, uh, lead clips, might just get half decent leg clips really like like the ones that you're selling at the moment they're perfect do exactly what they say on the tin clip the lead on and you ain't going to lose anything but at the same time if you do snap up it's easy for the fish to discharge the lead and they're not swimming around with a two and a half three ounce lead banging I've against seen, them i've seen before sam that people they force that on so tight that when the lead's slapping around it don't actually come off the sleeve so you only have to go no. on is it a few few notches is it on the on the, the, the lead? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly that. You'll, you'll see on the top of the clip, there'll be little ridges along as it goes, and just two or three little ridges on, with really a rubber stop there, easy as. Oh, awesome, brilliant. And then uh, knots. Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail, because obviously Jason's going to go through a few more knots and whatnot on the, uh, the rig uh, thing that we're doing. Uh, but I, personally, I use a five-tone grinner. Nice and easy not to learn. And it's strong as hell and easy to learn. Yeah, so it's, it's a beginner's knot basically, and it it will save yeah, you. Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're out. Uh, and then bait, bait can be can be a massive pain in the <laughs> in the butt. It's Sorry. a big <laughs> with bait, isn't it? There's so much of it out there. But there's, there's so much so much variety as well. You could go for like natural sort of baits like corn and bread. And then you've got boilies. Then you've got particles. Really, I would, I would say when you're approaching a lake, speak to the bailiff. He knows what the fish are being caught on. Even if you're going down there and you're not fishing, just have a chat with the bailiff. Obviously, socially distanced. Yeah, but, distance, of course. <laughs> speak to him. Find out what the fish are coming out on. That way you're not wasting your money on hundreds of kilos of boilies or hundreds of kilos of particles when the fish aren't eating that. Mm. If they're eating on sweet corn, 
get yourself a bit of cut of tins of sweet corn or throw it myself i use frozen sweet corn yeah. and it worked wonders and a it couple of uh, rubber to, sweet corn on the hook sorry yeah it, does, it doesn't have to cost a fortune does it i mean no, no, it's definitely not 10 pound the bag 10 pound a kg it is 15 pound a kg that you know but the simple corn and hemp that that, yeah. that work, yeah. work, work brilliantly work brilliantly. i mean i've I've had so many catfish, not just carp, on, on corn and boilies really? and stuff like that. It, it's not, you'd think being a catfish, it'd be going for like live baits, dead baits, but all sorts of fish. And that, I mean, that's another the thing with the, the bait as well. Every fish pretty much eats the same fish as what carp do. Carp yeah. primarily are a trashy fish. They eat anything. You literally I, mean, anything. I, I, remember, I remember back when I was a lot younger, I heard of a guy who, who caught a, I think it was a good size common on a physical piece of squid <laughs> of all things, a tentacle of squid. So they can pretty much eat anything. And like I say, if you speak to the bailiff, he can aim you in the right direction of what bait's working for that particular venue. And that way you're not wasting your money. Exactly. Uh, then uh, brush on a few miscellaneous bits and pieces. So obviously when you're out on the bank, you want to be comfortable. Yep. So cool. you, want, you want some sort of chair. Now, obviously, at the moment, we're only day fishing. So bed chairs and bivvies, sleeping bags, stuff like that. I'm not going to go into too much detail at the moment because, one, we're only day fishing at the moment. And, two, it's more of an intermediate sort of thing. When you're beginning, you're not really looking into going in for the nights. You're looking at doing just days here and there. And you're, so going, like to the do a, Sorry? you're going to do another one a bit later today, aren't you, Sam? About yeah, more yeah, intermediate yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, exactly that. So with that on a, the miscellaneous sort of thing, trying to keep comfortable for the day, a decent chair, a brolly, and just your normal luggage, really. So you like your rucksack, oh, oh, and you like your bait boxes and stuff like that. Yeah. And tea. Sorry? And your tea, flask of tea, something hot to drink. Oh, well, of course, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> important of course, yeah. I mean, also, this, this, time of year, <laughs> this time of year you want to be looking at taking some sort of like warm foods with you, a little stove maybe a thermos flask or a kettle a little bottle of water so you make yourselves cups of tea and whatnot excuse me and then through the summer months make sure you take a little cool box with you keep some cold drinks in there just make sure you're keeping yourself um hydrated and whatnot and obviously sun cream in the um, summer luggage wise <laughs> Yeah, of course, of course, yeah, yeah, unless you're a donut. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, with the luggage side of things, personally, I'm a massive believer in rucksacks. Now, mm -hmm. I know the new thing at the moment is buying lots of little bags to go onto your barra, which, yes. don't get me wrong, look pretty, but I'm a little bit old school. I like my rucksacks. Well, I've what actually got a, rucksack, I've got a rucksack myself, Sam, so I, 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 I swap and change, but I find the rucksack, you flick it on your back, you get everything you need, and you can just waddle around, especially if you're exactly stalking. That. Again, yeah. again, it's, way, it's perfect for beginners, a rucksack. So yeah. You can put all your gear into the one bag, exactly. apart from obviously like your food. I mean, myself, I keep all my food and stuff like that separate, and all my main tackle goes into my rucksack. And everything's yeah. together then. But again, it's, say you're, you're walking around, and you see a, a fish show, all you've got to do is tuck a few bits back in your rucksack, bag on your back, pick up your rod, yeah. and you're away over to where the fish was. It makes it nice and easy. Uh, and it keeps things tidy underneath your body as well. Exactly. Uh, and then there's clothing. Obviously, this time of year, it is bloody cold. Yeah. Very good stuff. <laughs> so, as a, as a beginner, make sure you wrap up. Don't dive into getting all these winter suits and that straight away. Obviously, you're a beginner. You're learning exactly. whether you even like fishing. So you don't want to go spending a couple of hundred quid on a winter suit when it turns out you might not even like fishing. So make sure you wrap up nice and warm, gloves, cut a pair of socks, cut a jumpers, good jacket, and you're away. Uh, then there's waders. Waders can be a good handy tool. Uh, it depends on the venue you're fishing. Some venues are a bit funny about you wading into the water. Uh, myself, I like to fish linears a lot. So then I've got a problem with you going in with waders. And it, you can get some really good photos with a fish when you're out in, in the water with the waders on. Uh, it just looks a lot better. Okay, brilliant. I suppose because they're, when they're bigger, they actually say you actually have to be in the water with the bigger ones, don't they? Because in case they roll or you drop them, they like... Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So, yeah, basically, um, 
that pretty much scratches on the beginner sort of thing, really. Um, well, what about uh, what what venues would you recommend, Sam? Uh, like runs Wars or I know there's a few. Oh, as, yeah, as a beginner, places. as a beginner, I would say approach a runs water first. So in the West Berkshire area, I've got Vale Farm Fisheries and um, Frobury Farm Fisheries, which are really good beginner waters. Yeah. I mean, I, I take my little girl there in the summer. And no word of a lie, you could have your rod in there for two minutes and mm. it's away, which is That's really good, good, good for time fishing. Good way, good way to see if your rigs are working, if you're doing it right, if you're you're handling things quite comfortably. And I suppose if you if you're at uh, more of a runs water or well known water or a day ticket, there's gonna be more anglers around. So hopefully you'll be able to sort of if you're in trouble, there'll be another experienced oh, angler. Of course, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And at, at the same time, runs waters primarily tend to not have any massive massive fish that you're going to get in trouble with so you, you sort of aim at like a 10 15 pound maximum sort of fish it's a good step to start with catching carp cool. yeah well, sam that's been brilliant mate i really appreciate your time you've been spot on you've, you've gave us a, a breakdown of what carp fishing equipment you need you've touched on safety some basic baits rigs so it doesn't have to be overly expensive and I think one of the no, key no, no, by all means. When you first start, fish to your means. Don't exactly. go buying out all the top end stuff. There's no need for it straight away. That's that's the beauty of fishing. What I love about it so much as well is that you can upgrade over time. Exactly. I mean, I, I've only just recently upgraded my own rods. I, I was I was borrowing some from my dad for for yeah. the first couple of years. Yeah. And absolutely. I've only recently upgraded mine to have physically have my own rods. Yeah. So it's it's not something you need to go into straight away like a bull in a china shop and buy everything expensive, yeah. as it were. Yeah, and a lot of us have nice expensive rods, alarms and pods that we sit behind for 24 hours and then just pack up and take home about even catching a fish. <laughs> well, it's like that, but then that's just camping. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love a bit of camping, Sam. I seem to love a bit of camping. <laughs> Sam, honestly, I appreciate your time, mate. And I know it was thrown on you a little bit short notice. And it is our first little sort of hooked on angling live educational feed. So I'm, I'm pleased to have you part of my team. I'm real pleased that you're willing to come on camera and do little bits for us. Because it is quite hard for some people because it can be a little bit nervy, a little bit embarrassing. And, you know, it's always hard. But you've done spot on, mate. And I really, really do appreciate it. And hopefully a lot of people watch this and they've got a little insight of what carp angling is about and the safety aspects as well so absolutely spot on sam thank you no problem at all mark and can i add as well when it comes to like the the carp care sort of thing all, all the products that i mentioned with the carp care can also be found in our uk angling shop thank you mate that's all right mate i'm gonna wrap this up now i think we've uh, we've we've bored people enough but it's a good uh <laughs> insight into it, isn't it? I mean, not everyone likes carp. We're going to do lots about rope. We can actually do bream. Everyone loves a good bream, don't they, in the carp world? No, why not? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do lots about the bream, but I said we've got Jason doing some rig talks, and it's a shame because if he wasn't having to do all this social distancing, we'd be doing this down the lake, which would be nice on a sunny day, you know, and then hopefully oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. people would be able to join us down there on the bank. We'd be able to show them things as well. So, like I said, mate, it's, it's been awesome. So I'm going to get you booked in for the next episode um, to, into Problem, intermediate. Mate. Then we're going Sound. to go advanced. So we're going to do the three stages of that, Sam. Yeah, yeah. Sound. Bless you, Sam. I'm cool. going to cut you off now, bud. I don't know if I'm going to lose you or I'll do this. Right, so. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, on that note, uh, remember, educate, encourage and inspire. And, uh, I'll catch you boys in the next one. Bless you, Sam. Thank you, pal. Cheers, mate. Take care, mate. ta -da. Well, I can't say a bigger, better thank you to Sam for taking his time. You've all been really, really great. We try not to do this for too long because we know that other things are going on. Um, you know, so we, we try to try and do always on a Sunday at 7. We're not going to do next Sunday at 7. And it's going to be Monday at 7 because Jason informed me. I don't want to upset anyone because it's had a, a bloody had a week. Because it's a bad time today. So we've got lots of plans for the other half. So we can't be talking about fishing on bad time today. Day after we can. On the day, you can't do that. Um, we are also, because we've got quite a lot of people we're interested, we're thinking about potentially doing a Wednesday slot as well, because we've got so many topics to cover. Exactly how we've just done with Sam, 
uh, match, course, pike, predator. I'm still got, I've got Dave Mutton ready to go, so I need to fit him in somewhere as well. Um, and again, I was saying before we um, dropped on with Sam, I was a little bit disappointed because I've been spoke to lots of other companies and other groups. You know, it's not all about numbers. We don't, you know, you, you might have a group of only 200 people in. Just starting off, you're welcome to join us on this little live feed. We're not, we're not, we, you know, saying if you only can come on if you've got 5,000. If you've got 200 members, <clears throat> drop us a message and we'll arrange to do one of these with you. It's all about helping out each other. Um, it's like I said before, and I'll say it again, it's not a, a, a brand thing. It's an angling community thing. And we are an angling community, so we need to band together. Anyway, guys, as always, Sam stole off me. When you're on the bank, encourage, educate, and inspire. Anyway, guys, God bless, stay safe, and we'll speak to you. We'll see you next time.